Hello and welcome to yet another video. This is the third episode of the story, in which Naruto, born into the Uchiha clan, rises to become the strongest Uchiha and shinobi ever, alongside his sister, the Nine Tails Jinchuriki. Please like and subscribe to show your support. Let's get the show started. Three and a half months have gone by and it was now time for the Chunin exams. Naruto's training has really paid off even though it was tough with him and Kakashi each having their own missions to do, but it was worth it. Even though Naruto originally wanted help with just his lightning jutsus, they actually worked on everything. He was now as strong as a lojonin thanks to Kakashi and his tough training regime. While Naruto was training with Kakashi, Natsumi was also doing her own training and the results were astounding to say the least. Her training got serious when she met Yugao who trained her to use the Kubikuribocho and when she asked Kakashi with some private help. Of course she went to Naruto as well for the occasional spar and he was impressed. She was a Lochunin Kunoichi with skills in ninjutsu, kenjutsu and taijutsu. Her taijutsu was so good that she could now go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sasuke and managed to beat him half the time when Kakashi had them spar during team training. She was the perfect counter for Naruto's ninjutsu since she had wind, water and earth chakra natures as well as the wood kekiai genkai which caused Hiruzen to have a heart attack when he found out. She didn't understand the big deal about it until Naruto explained to her that she had the rare kekiai genkai of Hashirama Senju and that it was extremely powerful. Sasuke was too busy being angry at Natsumi and Naruto's growth, that he actually hindered himself during training. He spied on them during his training to see if he could copy any jutsus from them and nearly killed himself when he copied the shadow clone jutsu from Natsumi. The result of that was him staying in the hospital for nearly two weeks thanks to the strain on his chakra reserves. Of course Sakura was right by his side every day he was there since she still didn't train as much, but she was about to get a wake-up call very soon. Sakura, Natsumi, Naruto, and Sasuke were all waiting for Kakashi to arrive at training ground 7 and they were all getting annoyed except for Naruto who sent a shadow clone in his place. While he was sleeping, Sasuke and Natsumi were glaring at each other and you could feel the hatred coming from both of them. They've been like this since the wave mission. Sakura thought and then Kakashi showed up, hello there. Good morning. Kakashi said, you're late. Sakura yelled, yeah. Even Naruto was on time. Natsumi yelled and pointed at Naruto who was sleeping in the tree, they don't know that it's a shadow clone. Kakashi thought, so, what are we doing today, Cyclope sensei Natsumi asked, Cyclops? Anyway, we have some D-rank missions to complete and then you have the rest of the day to yourselves. Kakashi said and they groaned, another stupid D-rank mission? Come on. Give us something exciting to do. Natsumi said, the quicker we get this done, the quicker you can enjoy your day. Kakashi said few hours later, seriously, Natsumi. You're hopeless. I think you've set. The record for most times getting injured on D-rank missions. It's pathetic really. Sakura said as they were walking around the village, you wanna go, Pinky? Keep testing me and I'll give you another nod on that big S forehead of yours. Natsumi said, bring it, tomato. I'll finish you off myself. Sakura said, oh yeah? Then let's go. Natsumi said and then a cat fight started between the two of them, I guess we're not making a lot of progress on the teamwork thing, huh? Kakashi asked, that's right. Our teamwork is all messed up because of Sakura and Sasuke. She's useless and Sasuke thinks he's better than everyone else. Natsumi said, as she had Sakura in a headlock, not everyone. Just you. I'm better and stronger than you are. Sasuke said, if I remember correctly, I kicked your ass so many times over these past three and a half months that it's not even funny, duck butt. Natsumi said and Sasuke grit his teeth before walking away, I am not useless. Sakura said and bit Natsumi, ow. That's it. Natsumi said and they started to argue, alright, 
guys. Let's call it a day. You can beat each other to a pulp some other time. Anyway, I have to file my report on this mission. Kakashi said and went up in smoke, now that he's gone, I don't have to hold back. You're dead, Pinky. Natsumi said, bring it, tomato, wait, what's that? Sakura asked as she saw a box on the ground with holes in it, I don't know. Natsumi said and ran around a few times with the box following her until she had enough, that's the worst disguise I've ever seen. Get your ass out here. Natsumi said, you saw through my camouflage again. You're slick, boss. Just what I'd expect from my greatest rival. A kid voice said and the box went up in smoke, Kanoamaru, Udon, Moegi. What do you want? I have to train. Natsumi said, you promised that you would play ninja with us today. Come on. Kanoamaru said, oh, did I say that? Natsumi asked, a ninja playing ninja? That is so lame. Sakura said, shut up, Pinky. Natsumi said, hey, boss. Who's this girl? Why's her forehead so big? Kanoamaru asked and Natsumi sighed, I'd run if I were you, Kanoamaru. Natsumi said and when Kanoamaru looked at Sakura, he took off running until he bumped into somebody, do you need something? The boy asked and lifted Kanoamaru up by his scarf, Kanoamaru. Natsumi said, so, does this hurt, punk? The boy asked as he started to choke Kanoamaru, put him down, Kankuro. You know you'll pay for it later. Tamari said, you better take your hands off him right now. Natsumi said, so these are the Leaf Village's genin. They don't look like much compared to Naruto. Kankuro thought, we've got a few minutes before he gets here. Let's mess with these punks. Kankuro said, let go of me you jerk. Kanoamaru said and started to kick at Kankuro, you're feisty, but not for long. Kankuro said, put him down. Natsumi said and ran at Kankuro, but something tripped her, you're a. Leaf Genin too. Looks like your village is full of wimps except for that kid Naruto I met a few months back. Kankuro said, you know him? Natsumi asked, yeah. He was in our village during a sandstorm and he stayed with us. Tamari said and then Kanoamaru disappeared from Kankuro's hand, what the? Kankuro asked, he's gone. Natsumi thought, what just happened? Sakura thought, you're not even here that long and you're already starting problems, Kankuro. Picking on children. Have you no shame? Naruto asked, Naruto? I wasn't going to do anything that bad to him. Kankuro said and chuckled, as annoying as the little boy is, he's the grandson of the Hokage and he has a squad of Umbu following him every day. One bad move and then we would have had to send you back to Suna in a body bag. Naruto said and then caught a rock aimed for Kankuro, who threw that? Natsumi asked, nice of you to join us, Sasuke. Same for you, Gara. Naruto said and looked up into the trees, does he not see me standing here? Tamari thought and started to pout, Sasuke. Sakura said, thanks for the save, Naruto. Kanoamaru said, how was he able to sense me? I know I had my chakra hidden. Sasuke thought, Kankuro, back off. You're an embarrassment to our village. Gara said, uh. Hey, Gara. Kankuro said, this is the guy Naruto detected. He said he was here and I'm just now seeing him. Sasuke thought, have you forgotten the reason we came all the way here? Gara asked, something's wrong. Gara's not calm or anything, but he should be. Naruto thought, I know. They started it though. Kankuro said, shut up or I'll kill you. Gara said, right. I was totally out of line. Sorry, Gara. Kankuro said, I'm sorry for any trouble he's caused. Gara said and vanished into sand, he has the same evil look in his eye as Sasuke. Natsumi thought, let's go. We didn't come here to play games. Gara said, hold on. Sakura said, what? 
Tamari asked, I can tell from your headband that you come from the village hidden in the sand. Of course we're allies, but no shinobi can enter another's village without permission. So state your purpose. Sakura said, really? Is this your team, Naruto? Tamari asked, something like that. Naruto said, have they been living under a rock? They don't seem to know what's going on here. For your information, we have permission. We are hidden San Genin and we're here for the Chunin exams. Get the picture? Tamari asked, Chunin exams? Oh yeah that's right. I thought we had a bit more time. Natsumi said, we do. They don't start until next week. I'm already registered for the exams since I have to take them alone. Naruto said, why? Natsumi asked, because the maximum number of people you can have on a team is three. Let's face it, I can take on all three of you single-handedly so it makes sense that I take them alone. Naruto said, we'll see you later at the exams. Especially you, handsome. Tamari said and gave Naruto a kiss. On the cheek before leaving, what was that? Hey, blondie. Keep your lips off my brother. I'll kick your fucking ass you hussy. He already has a girlfriend. Natsumi said, I've told you this plenty of times, Natsumi. She's not my girlfriend. Naruto said, still, blondie here can't go around kissing you. She even pulled your mask down as bit. Natsumi said, well, she's already saw me without the mask. This is the girl I went out on a date with back in Suna. We've been in contact ever since. Naruto said, yup and you owe me a date. I'll be waiting outside the Golden Leaf Hotel at about seven. Don't be late. Tamari said and they walked away, Naruto. Sakura said, what's up? Naruto asked, how come she gets to see what you look like under the mask? Sakura asked, we were on a date and it would have been rude to eat with it on. Naruto said, well, can I see what you look like? Sakura asked, why is it so important to see what I look like under the mask? Naruto asked, because her, Ino and a bunch of other girls have a bet going to see who can catch you with your mask off first. Natsumi said, what does the winner get? Naruto asked, the winner has first dibs on your first kiss. Natsumi said, seriously? Well, that's not going to happen. Naruto said, don't worry. I'll protect you from the fangirls. Natsumi said and they all walked away next day, he's late again. He sets the time and we have to wait hours for him. What about my feelings? I rushed here so fast that I didn't even have time to blow dry my hair. Sakura said, I didn't even have enough time to brush my teeth or put on a clean bra. Natsumi said, you didn't? That's really gross and unladylike, Natsumi. Sakura said, at least I can wear a bra, flat chest. Natsumi said and they started to argue, it's the first thing in the morning and they're already driving me crazy. Sasuke thought and then Kakashi appeared hey. Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late. I got lost on the path of life. Kakashi said, you liar. Natsumi and Sakura yelled but then Naruto showed up, what's your excuse for being late? Natsumi asked, I had to help an old lady carry her bags home and she stayed on the other side of the village. I wasn't paying attention and I got lost after I took the wrong turn. Naruto said, you liar. Sakura yelled, actually, I kind of believe that one. I've seen him take wrong turns quite a bit because he wasn't paying attention. Natsumi said and Kakashi could tell Naruto was smirking behind his mask, he's even better at making excuses than me. Kakashi thought, I know this is a bit sudden, but I recommended you all for the Chunin exams. All four of you. Naruto already signed up to take them solo. These are the application forms. Kakashi said and held out three applications, application forms. Sakura asked, this is all voluntary. It's up to each of you. If you don't feel ready, you can wait until next year. Kakashi said, well it's about damn time. Natsumi. 
yelled and snatched her application, whoever wants to take the exams, sign the application and come to room 301 at the academy. It's at 3 p.m. five days from now. That's it. Kakashi said and left, Chunin exams. One step closer to becoming Hokage. I'll be up against a lot of wicked ninja. Natsumi said and started to giggle like a maniac, I better get the chance to fight that guy Gara and Naruto. Sasuke thought and glanced at Naruto, this is hopeless. I can't keep up with Sasuke and I can't even keep up with Natsumi. Naruto's a tough challenge, but I think he holds out on me when we spar and he still wipes the floor with me. I'll never pass these exams. Sakura thought, hey, Naruto. Natsumi said, hmm. Naruto answered, how awesome would it be if we fought in the Chunin exams? Natsumi asked, it wouldn't change much. You'd still lose, but I'll give you a fighting chance. Naruto said, I can totally beat you. Natsumi said, I can counter everything you do ninjutsu-wise, taijutsu-wise, and kenjutsu-wise. Genjutsu you don't stand a chance against and let's just say that my training the past three and a half months will make what you do for training look like child's play. Naruto said, I'll find a way to beat you and when I do, you have to raise my hand and kiss my feet while you tell me how awesome I am. Natsumi said, is that a challenge? Naruto asked, you damn right it is. We're tied at 24 and this is the tiebreaker. Natsumi said, you say that every time we're tied. Naruto said, you two still do your crazy challenges? Sakura asked, you and Ino still fight over Sasuke? Naruto asked, that's different. Sakura said, it's pathetic. Fighting over a boy who isn't all that and doesn't even want you. Natsumi said, he is all that and I'll make him want me. Sakura said, if he's all that, then why can't he beat me or Naruto? He has the Sharingan which he claims is the ultimate dojitsu, but he's lost to me while using it and he lost to Naruto while using it. Naruto doesn't even use his Sharingan when he spars with us. He's just overhyped because his clan was killed. Nothing he does really stands out that makes people go wow. Natsumi said, how about I show you what you're messing with, loser? Sasuke asked and activated his Sharingan, save it for the Chunin exams, Sasuke. Naruto said, shut up. You don't tell me what to do, pathetic half-breed. Sasuke said, calling me a half-breed isn't much of an insult. Let me ask you something, Sasuke. What is the most important thing to you in life? Naruto asked, power. Power is all that matters to me and nothing else. Sasuke said, I see. I'll see you all at the Chunin exams. Naruto said and walked away, most important thing in life? Sakura thought, as she watched Naruto walk away, I'm gonna head home. Sakura said and walked away, me too. Natsumi said, as she left Sasuke alone Hokage office, yo, old man. Naruto said, as he walked into the office, what can I help you with? Naruto? Hiruzen asked, both of the spies are in the village. Naruto said, I'll place an umbu watch on them. Hiruzen said, no, don't. We don't know if they're sensor-type ninja and let's be honest, the umbu in this village other than Nico sucks. They couldn't even find Natsumi for an entire year after she was kicked out of the orphanage. Naruto said and Hiruzen sighed, I'm sorry, Naruto. I have to do this. Hiruzen said, no. You don't get it. The unidentifiable spy came in with another person who I can tell is a Kage-level shinobi. Whoever it is will be able to sense the umbu with ease. Naruto said and Hiruzen was shocked, a Kage-level shinobi? Why would a Kage-level shinobi be in the Chunin exams? I'll look into it. Hiruzen said, I know I'm going solo in the Chunin exams, but protecting Natsumi is my main priority. Naruto said, I understand, but I want you to protect yourself as well. I don't care if you have to blow something up, get away from whoever it is if you can. Hiruzen said, I will. So, can you tell me the parts of the Chunin exams? 
Naruto asked and Hiruzen chuckled, I'm afraid not, Naruto. That would be cheating. Hiruzen said, so. Naruto said and Hiruzen just looked at him, although he's like Minato at times, he has a tendency to act like Sayuri as well. Hiruzen thought, just get ready. You still have five days to prepare. Hiruzen said, yeah yeah. So, were you serious about me blowing something up? Naruto asked, yes. Hiruzen said, good. I'll have to get Natsumi's help with that. Naruto said and when he walked away, Hiruzen saw a ghostly figure of Sayuri and Kushina grinning, what did I just do? Hiruzen thought, Lord Hokage, the council is waiting for you. His secretary said, I'll be there shortly. Hiruzen said, of course. The secretary said five days later Chunin exams the time for the Chunin exams was finally here and everyone was getting ready. Natsumi joined Naruto at the memorial stone early in the morning after she learned her parents' names were there. They stood there for three hours in silence before they made it to the academy where Sasuke and Sakura were both waiting for them. Took you too long enough. You're both late. Sakura said, we got a bit distracted. Natsumi said and just kept walking, what's gotten into her? She seems different. Sasuke thought, are you both ready? Naruto asked, HN. Sasuke said and walked away, us? What about you? You're taking it by yourself. Sakura said, I'll be fine. I've been training pretty hard these past few months. Naruto said, as they entered the academy, I know. I've heard you were training with Kakashi-sensei a bit. Sakura said, I was. How about you? Did you train? Naruto asked and he already had a good idea of her answer, no, but it's not because I didn't want to. It's just that everything I tried didn't seem to fit me. I mean, thanks to our spars I can break out of some genjutsu, but being a ninjutsu and taijutsu specialist. Doesn't seem to work for me. Maybe I should give up after the Chunin exams. The only person I might be able to beat is Ino and that's not really saying anything since she's just like me. Sakura said read this. Naruto said and gave her a book, what is it? Sakura asked, it's a beginner's medical ninjutsu book by Tsunade Senju. I had the old man give this to me a while back and I've been done with it for like four years. Naruto said, medical ninjutsu? I'll give it a try. Maybe I'll shadow somebody at the hospital if this fits me. Sakura said, I'll stop you right there. The people at the hospital suck. It's a reason why our fatality rate is so high. This book was written by the world's best medical ninja, so I think you'll be fine. It mainly has to do with cleaning wounds and bandaging them as well as how to identify the basic poisons. Naruto said, thank you, Naruto. Sakura said, no problem. Naruto said and pulled down his mask giving her a smile causing her jaw to drop, he's hotter than Sasuke. Sakura thought and blushed, w we should catch up to Sasuke and Natsumi. Sakura said and walked quicker, works every time. Naruto said as they caught up to Sasuke and Natsumi, what's going on here? Sakura asked, I don't know. Two people are blocking the door. Natsumi said, as they saw a bowl-cut haired boy get knocked to the ground, you're taking the Chunin exams, but you can't even get past us? Why don't you just give up now before you get hurt? One of the boys said, yeah. I think I hear your mommy calling you. The other said, wait a minute. Is that Izumo and Kotetsu in a henge? I wonder what they're doing here. Naruto thought, please let us through. We're supposed to go in there. Ten Ten said and then she got punched in the face by one of them, that's harsh. A random genin said, did you say harsh? Don't kid yourself. We're being nice by comparison. The exams are gonna make this look like a picnic. Kotetsu said, some of you won't survive the exam, others will be wrecked for life and some of you may go crazy. Izumo said, Fortunin it's always life and death. You think it's a joke? Chunin are qualified to lead missions. 
The life of your teammates is in your hands, so you better be tough enough to take the heat. Delicate little girls don't belong here. Kotetsu said, we're just thinning out the herd. You won't pass anyway, so go home and play with your dolls. Izumo said and then Team 7 walked over to them, very nice speech. Now, both of you step aside and let me through. While you're at it, drop the genjutsu. We can see through your illusion anyway. We're going to the third floor and this is only the second. Sasuke said, well, well. Kotetsu said, so, you noticed the genjutsu, huh? Izumo asked, tell them, Sakura. I'm sure you saw it before anyone else did. You have the sharpest eyes and best analytical skills on our team. You must have seen this coming a mile away. Sasuke said, you also have the Sharingan. Or did you? Forget, dipshit. It's obvious they're doing this to get rid of the weaker competition, but no, sir dumbass here had to go and ruin it. Unbelievable. Sometimes I wonder if you're dumber than Kiba. Natsumi said, I mean. She has a point. Ten ten, you can stop acting now. Naruto said, how'd you know? Ten ten asked, I've seen you plenty of times and witnessed your training. There's no way you're this weak. Naruto said, fine. I guess our plan is over with guys. Wait a minute. That sword on your back, where'd you get it? Ten Ten asked, form your father's shop. I was able to pull it out. Naruto said, can I have it? Ten Ten asked, no and if you think my sword is special, just wait until Natsumi uses her sword. Naruto said and then her teammate walked up to Sakura, what happened to the bruises he had before? They're gone. Sasuke thought, my name is Rock Lee. You are Sakura, right? Rock Lee asked, huh? Sakura asked, please be my girlfriend. I will protect you with my life. Rock Lee said, definitely not. Sakura said and Lee suddenly lost confidence, why? Rock Lee asked, because you're a weirdo. Sakura said and Lee hung his head in shame, come on, Pinky. It's not like many guys will ask you out anyway. Natsumi said, quiet you. I don't see anybody asking you out either. Sakura said, hey you. Over here. What's your name? The other boy on Ten Ten's team asked looking at Sasuke, you should give your own name before asking for someone else's. Sasuke said, you're a rookie, aren't you? How old are you anyway? The boy asked, he's 13 and if you want to date him you have a long line of fangirls to get behind. Natsumi said, what was that? The boy asked, what? You can't fucking hear. You heard what I said. Natsumi said, but then she was picked up and placed over Naruto's shoulder, all right. That's enough from you. Let's go guys. Naruto said, hey. Put me down. Natsumi whined, nope. Naruto said, I'm wearing a blouse. I can't be like this. Natsumi said, you're wearing pants underneath. You'll be fine. Naruto said, what if the pale-eyed boy peeks on me? Natsumi whined, then I'll kick his ass during the chunin exams. Naruto said and she gave up, fine. Natsumi said and pouted as Naruto carried her away, they're funny. What's the matter, Niji? Ten Ten asked, who was that boy with the mask? Niji asked, that's Naruto Uchiha. From what I heard he's taking the Chunin exams as a solo since the most you can have on a team is three. Ten Ten said, Naruto Uchiha? He's the one guy sensei told us about. Lee said, that's right. He's an elite genin and turned down a field promotion a few months back since he wants to become a Chunin with Natsumi. Ten Ten said, so, how strong do you think he is? Niji asked, I don't know. He's definitely Chunin level at least. I've heard my dad refer to him as the most balanced shinobi since he's skilled in every aspect of being a ninja. Ninjutsu, Taijutsu, Genjutsu, Fuinjutsu, Medical. Ninjutsu, you name it. 
apparently he has speed along with power to match it from what little information Gai Sensei was able to gather. Ten Ten said, Naruto of the Uchiha clan. Niji thought, are you gonna challenge him? Ten Ten asked, HN. Niji said as he walked away with Ten Ten and Lee Room, 301 after leaving the mess on the second floor, Naruto, Sakura, Natsumi and Sasuke finally made it to the exam room, but Sasuke had a few scratches on him. Rock Lee tracked them down and challenged both Sasuke and Naruto to a fight which Naruto declined, but Sasuke accepted the challenge. Needless to say that even with the Sharingan, Sasuke was no match for him. Glad you all came, especially you, Sakura. Now you can all formally take the Chunin exams. Kakashi said, as he was waiting for them, what do you mean? Sakura asked, in order for you to take the Chunin exams, every member of the team must be here to enter. That's how it is this year. Usually only teams of three would be able to enter, but due to our unique situation, we had to change the rules a bit. Kakashi said, but you said the decision to take the exam was up to the individual. Sakura said, that's right. I did. Kakashi said, enough already. Can you move and let us in, Cyclope Sensei? Natsumi asked, as she started to get angry, I'm with her on this one. I don't really feel like hearing a speech or anything right now. Naruto said, fine. Sakura, Naruto, Sasuke and Natsumi. I'm proud of you. I couldn't ask for a better team. Good luck. Kakashi said and moved from in front of the doors, we won't let you down, Kakashi sensei. Natsumi said as they walked into the room, I guess we're not alone. Sakura said, as every genin in the room was looking at them, I had no idea that there'd be so much competition. If being scary looking was one of the tests, they've got me beat. Sakura thought, Sasuke, where have you been? Ino asked as she jumped on his back, hey, Ino. Natsumi said, hey girl. Boy, Sasuke. You have no idea how much you'd show up here. I've missed those brooding good looks of yours. Ino said, hey, you porker. Back off. He's mine. Sakura said, Miss Forehead. They let you in? Still go those big frown lines between your billboard brow, I see. Ino said, leave my forehead out of it. Sakura said and growled at Ino, they do this every time. Let's see, other than me and Natsumi, Gara, Tamari, Kankuro and six others, everyone has basic chakra levels. Three of them are that team with a music note on their headband. I haven't heard of that village before. Two of them are the spies and the other one. I don't know who this person is, but they've got Kage level reserves and their chakra is sinister. I'll have to be on guard at all times. Naruto thought and he was brought out of his thoughts when a voice spoke up, H hi, and Naruto. I I am glad you am made it here. Hinata said, H M. Oh, hey. It's high note, right? Naruto asked and Hinata deflated, it's Hinata. Kiba said. Whatever. I was close enough. Naruto said, Naruto, care for some treats? Ino asked, come on. Take the bait. Ino thought, no thank you. I already ate. Naruto said and Sakura smirked, hey, Ino. Guess what? Sakura said, what, forehead? Ino asked, I saw Naruto without his mask on. Sakura said, what? Ino yelled, yeah. He showed me before we came into the Chunin exams. Sakura said, that's not fair. Now you get to have his first kiss. Ino said, nah. I don't want it. Sakura said, is he ugly? Because I'm not kissing an ugly boy. Ino said, actually, he's not. H he's hotter than Sasuke actually. Sakura said, what? There's no way he's hotter than Sasuke. Natsumi, is that true? Ino asked, uh, I don't go around checking out my brother. That's weird. Natsumi said, hey, you guys might want to keep it down a little. 
I mean, no offense, but you're the ten rookies, right? Fresh out of the academy? I wouldn't go making a spectacle of yourselves. Just cool it. This isn't a class field trip. A boy with glasses said, so, this is the other spy. Naruto thought, well, who asked you, for eyes? Better yet, what's your damn name? Natsumi asked, I'm Kabuto Yakushi. Kabuto said, Kabuto Yakushi, huh? Naruto thought, see those guys right there? They're from the Rain Village. Very touchy. They all are. This exam makes everyone tense, and you don't want to rub them the wrong way right now. You can't help it. I mean how could you know how things work? You're just rookies. You remind me of myself a while back. Kabuto said, this isn't the first time you've taken the exam? Sakura asked, obviously not. I mean look at him. He's obviously got to be at least 19 or 20. From what I gathered, the Chunin exams happen twice a year every six months. That would mean you've failed the Chunin exams nearly 14 times. Natsumi said, actually, this is my seventh try. Kabuto said, well, you only suck half as much as I originally thought. Natsumi said, wow, a veteran. You must be an expert by now. Sakura said, I don't know. I mean something doesn't seem right about this. Natsumi said, huh? What do you mean? Ino asked, I mean if he failed the Chunin exams so many times, why bother to keep trying? Every year he gains experience from these things and missions, but he still can't pass. Natsumi said, she doesn't know how right she is at this moment. Naruto thought, don't listen to her. She's not the brightest in the bunch. Sakura said, I'll have you know that our academic grades were basically identical. If I'm not the brightest in the brunch, then neither are you. Natsumi said, listen, since you're an expert here, do you think you could give us some tips? Choji asked, sure. I can help you kids out a little with my ninja info cards. Kabuto said, what are those? Sakura asked, it's hard to explain but these cards have been chakra encoded with everything I've learned over the past four years. I've got more than two hundred of them. So you. See, I haven't been completely wasting my time. Kabuto said, obviously you have if you never passed the Chunin exams. Natsumi said, Natsumi, be quiet. Continue, Kabuto. You've piqued my interest with those cards of yours. Naruto said and then Natsumi looked at him, what's he planning? Something like this wouldn't interest him in the slightest. Actually, I don't even think he'd need any help given how strong he is. Natsumi thought, they may not look like much to the naked eye. In fact, they appear blank. Don't want just anyone seeing this stuff. Kabuto said and then Sasuke stepped forward, do those cards of yours have any information on the other candidates, individually? Sasuke asked, if he does, then it won't be from anybody that's taking the Chunin exams for the first time. Naruto said, do you have someone special in mind? Kabuto asked and glanced at Naruto, I might. Sasuke said, I can't promise my information is complete or perfect, but I've got something on just about everyone, including you guys of course. Kabuto said and bells went off in Naruto's head, how do you have information on us and this is our first time taking the Chunin exams? Naruto asked, I do my research extremely thoroughly. Kabuto said, I'm not buying it. The only way you could get information from us is if you talk to us personally or talk to our Jonin instructor. I can tell you now that none of them talk to you since I'm close with two of the three Jonin sensei and the third one is the leader of Team 7. Now, who did you really get the information from? Naruto asked, all right. You caught me. The Hokage gave me the information after I asked. Kabuto said, the Hokage, huh? Looks like I'll have to have a little chat with him. Naruto said, wait a minute. There's no way the old man would give out that kind of information. Especially to a random genin at that. What the hell is going on? Natsumi thought, 
as she looked at Naruto who shook his head a bit, you don't have to do that. I was barely able to get a meeting with him since he's so busy. Kabuto said, I'll take my chances. Naruto said, I'll have to eliminate him during the second part or he'll ruin everything. Kabuto thought, so, Sasuke. Who do you have in mind? Tell me anything you know about them. A description, where they're from, whatever. Anything at all. Kabuto said, Gara of the desert, Rock Lee of the Leaf Village and Naruto Uchiha as well. Sasuke said, why do you want to know about Naruto? He's our teammate. Sakura said, he's not the only one. I mean, nobody really knows much about his skills. Ino said, that's no fun. You even know their names. First up is Rock Lee. He's a year older than you. Has completed 11 C-rank missions and 20 D-tank missions. His team join in Sensei is Might Guy and in the last 12 months his Taijutsu has grown exponentially. His other skills are shaky. Last year he chose to not take the Chunin exams. His teammates are Niji Hyuga and Ten Ten. He said, a Taijutsu specialist? No wonder he kicked your ass Sasuke. Natsumi said, now for Gara. He has completed eight C ranks and get this A B rank mission while not even being touched on a single mission. He said, shocking all the genin except Naruto, now, tell me about Naruto. Sasuke said and Kabuto looked at Naruto, go ahead. Tell him about my file. Naruto said, Naruto Uchiha. He's done 0 D rank, 17 C rank, 8 B rank, 2 A rank and 4 S rank missions. His skills aren't even listed on here, but most jonin say he's already more skilled than a seasoned chunin. Like Gara, he's never been injured or touched on a mission. Kabuto said and the room went quiet as everyone looked at Naruto, w what? That has to be a lie. Ino said, I'm afraid not. Kabuto said, loser, when did you get another A rank mission and 4 S ranks? Sasuke asked angrily, don't worry about it side branch member. Naruto said Kabuto just unintentionally solidified himself as a spy. He shouldn't have mission records or skills for that matter, those were all confidential to the Hokage and Jonin sensei. Especially his 4S rank missions. One was for teaching the Hokage how to defeat paperwork, capturing Mizuki after he stole the Forbidden Scroll, watching over Natsumi until he graduated and the ongoing one was capturing Kabuto who was a spy. He looked and saw Kabuto get attacked by the sound ninja that he saw in the room. He noticed Kabuto sensed they were coming, but didn't bother to dodge them. Must be to keep any suspicions off of them. Naruto thought and then the proctor came into the room, all right that's enough no fighting or I will kick you out my name is Ibiki and I am the proctor for this stage now grab a number sit down. Ibiki yelled and everybody ran to their seats after getting a number. Now the first part of the Chunin exams is a written test. You have 45 minutes to answer 9 questions. The final 10th question will be asked after time is up if you're caught cheating 5 times your team is eliminated and will be sent out. Now begin. Ibiki said 45 minutes later, all right pencils down, it's time for the 10th question. Are you done playing with your puppet? He asked Kankuro who looked scared at having been caught. How'd he know? Kankuro thought, now you have the option to take the 10th question, however if one person from a team refuses you all fail. It doesn't matter if you get all nine questions correct if you choose to not take the tenth question you will get a zero. But if you choose to take the question and get it wrong you will never be able to take the Chunin exams ever again. Ibiki said, what kind of rule is that? There are plenty of people who've taken this exam before. Kiba yelled and Ibiki gave a hollowed laugh before answering. Well you must be unlucky because I wasn't making the rules before, but I am now. Of course if you don't want to take it you don't have to. There's always the Chunin exams next year. Those who don't wish to take it. Raise your hand. Your number will be recorded and you may leave. Ibiki said and some people started to leave until Natsumi spoke up, don't underestimate me. 
I don't quit and I don't run. You don't scare me you scarred face piece of chicken shit. Even if I am a genin for the rest of my life, I will become Hokage. You can take your rules and shove them up your ass. Natsumi yelled, she's got guts. Ibiki thought, this decision is one that could change your life. If for any reason you would rather quit, now's your last chance. Ibiki said, fuck that quitting shit. I never go back on my word. Natsumi said, 79 people left, that's more than I expected, however none of them show signs of giving up I guess this is it. Ibiki thought, you tell him girl. Ino thought, way to go, Natsumi. Sakura thought, now for all of you remaining, you all passed the first exam. Ibiki said and everyone was stunned, hold on, what just happened? What kind of rules are those? What do you mean we passed? Where's the tenth question? Sakura asked, there never was a tenth question, well not a written one. Your decision to stay was the answer to the tenth question. Ibiki said, huh? Sakura asked, hold on so the other nine questions were just a waste of time? Tamari asked, not exactly. The nine questions served an important purpose on how to gather information without getting caught. Why do you think I put so much emphasis on getting caught? If you're going to be a ninja you need stealth and to know how to gather information quickly while in a hostile area. My objective was to test you not as individuals, but as a team and how well you function as a part of that team. That's why the test was scored on a team basis, so you'd know that everything you did or failed to do, would directly affect your teammates. I wanted to see how you'd handle the pressure. The first nine questions on the test were difficult. In fact, as you may have realized, they were too difficult for any genin to be expected to solve. I imagine most of you quickly came to that conclusion, that you'd have to cheat if you had any chance of passing. This test was designed for you to cheat and you couldn't cheat unless you had people to cheat from. I had two chunin disguised around the room who already knew the answers and had them sit with you. Ibiki said, well, I didn't even bother to do my test. However, I think he'll appreciate what I wrote here. Naruto thought, those who were caught, failed. It's better not to cheat than to cheat clumsily. Information. It can be the most valuable weapon in battle. How well you gather intelligence can determine whether a mission is a failure or a success. There'll be times you'll have to risk your life to get it. Ibiki said, as he removed his headband to reveal his head that was covered in cuts, burn marks and puncture wounds, oh shit. I wonder what he went through. Natsumi thought, of course, you must always consider the source of your information. Intelligence gathered from an enemy is not necessarily accurate. Always bear this in mind. Disinformation can be worse than no information at all. It can lead to the death of comrades or the loss of a village. That's why I put you in the position where you had to gather accurate intelligence. Cheat in order to survive and that's why those who weren't good enough at it were weeded out leaving the rest of you. Ibiki said, I still don't understand the tenth question thing. Tamari said, the tenth question was the main point of the whole exam. Surely, you see that. Ibiki said, sure, but can you explain it anyway? Sakura asked, it's simple. The tenth question was if we wanted to stay. This was a psychological exam and we all passed. Some of us passed because of our own mental toughness, some passed because of Natsumi's speech and some passed because they saw their teammate's strong will to continue. Naruto said, he's correct. The final question gave you two difficult choices. You could choose to skip the question, though it means that both you and your teammates would fail. Then you could try and answer it, but knowing if you got it wrong, you could lose your chances of ever being chunin. It was a no-win situation. For example, let me give you a hypothetical mission. To steal a document from an enemy stronghold. You have no idea how many ninja the enemy has or how heavily armed they are. You also have reason to believe that the enemy expects you, that you might very well be walking blindly into a trap. Ibiki said, this sounds like a mission I did two months ago. Naruto thought, now, 
Do you have the option of taking a pass on this mission or say my comrades and I would rather live to fight another day? Can you choose to avoid danger? No. There will be many missions that will seem almost suicidal if you think about it, but you don't think about it. You only think of achieving the goal through courage and discipline. These are the qualities required of a Chunin squad leader. Those who choose the safer of two paths, those whose determination falters in the face of adversity, those who would put their comrades' lives in jeopardy by worrying about their own, those who would save their own necks at the price of sacred honor will never be able to call themselves Chunin as long as I'm here. Ibiki said and then Sasuke had to open his mouth, if my teammates can't protect themselves then they have no business being a ninja. They're weak and deserve to die. I would only select the most powerful members on my team. Mental weakness should be evaluated before anybody becomes a ninja to prohibit such things. Sasuke said, then if that's the case, you would be the first person to not become a ninja. You're the weakest person here mentally. If somebody even mentions your brother's name you snap. Despite what he did, Itachi from what I heard never put his comrades in trouble while on a mission. Compared to him you're a joke and I bet your parents are. Rolling over in their graves because of your behavior. Congratulations dumbass, you just solidified your chances of not becoming a chunin, dipshit. Naruto said, watch what you say about my parents. Sasuke said and glared at him with his Sharingan, what are you going to do, fight me? We both know how that will end. You on the ground unconscious looking even more pathetic than you already do. Naruto said, enough. You can fight later. I hereby declare this part of the Chunin exams completed. There's nothing left for me to do, but wish you all good luck. Ibiki said, all right. We did it. First part is down. Woohoo. Natsumi yelled, she's a lively one, that's for sure. Ibiki thought as he and Naruto looked at the window, great. She's the proctor. I have a good guess as to where the second part is being held. Naruto thought as the glass was broken through and a banner was revealed through the smoke the sexy and happily taken Anko Mitarashi, all right boys and girls, no time for celebrating. My name is Anko Mitarashi and I am the proctor of the second part of the Chunin exams. Anko proudly exclaimed and everyone just looked at her while Naruto shook his head, you're early again. Ibiki said and Anko deflated, great. A screaming nutcase. She's kind of like Natsumi. Sakura thought, how many are there? Ibiki, you let all these guys pass. Your test was too easy. You must be getting soft. Enko said, or it could be a stronger crop of candidates this year. Ibiki said, HM. They sure don't look like it. Trust me, before I'm done with them, more than half will be eliminated. Enko said, more than half? Really? Sakura asked, this is going to be fun. All right, you maggots have had it easy so far, but things are going to be different starting first thing in the morning. I'll let your squad leaders know where to meet me. Dismissed. Except for you, my little masked maelstrom. Enko said and everyone left except Naruto, can you stop calling me that? Naruto asked, as he went up to her and gave her a hug, nope. So, how've you been? Haven't seen much of you. Enko said, been good. Doing a lot of training and missions. Naruto said, uh huh. Now, why did the old man tell me to come see you? Enko asked, well, we have a few uninvited guests in this year's Chunin exams. Kabuto Yakushi is a spy, there's somebody here that is easily a Kage level shinobi and somebody from IWA is in disguise here after me. Naruto said, Kabuto Yakushi? Hasn't he taken these exams like a dozen times? Enko asked, yeah. I'll look into his file along with his genin team. I've noticed that their clothes are oddly similar to those of that sound team. Ibiki said and Enko grabbed her neck in pain, what's wrong? Naruto asked, it's my curse mark. Enko said and Naruto's eyes went wide, it's Orochimaru. Naruto said, he's here. 
Ibiki said, the question is why though? Naruto said as he used some medical ninjutsu to release some pain on Anko's neck, Natsumi is the Nine Tails Jinchuriki. Maybe he's after her. Anko said, I doubt it. He's not dumb enough to risk releasing the Nine Tails. I don't even think it would work putting the curse mark on Natsumi if he even tried. The Nine Tails would detect if something foreign was put in her body and would immediately get rid of it. He's after something else, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to complete the second part quickly and then go back into the forest of death since she's technically one of my teammates. Naruto said, how do you know that's where the second part is? Ibiki asked, it's Anko that's in charge. It would be stupid if me to not know where the second part is. Anyway, you can go let the old man know what's going on and tell him not to act on it. He'll choke again if he has to kill Orochimaru like last time and we need to know what he's after. Naruto said, I'll let him know. Ibiki said and vanished, what about you, Anko? Naruto asked, I'm going to Karinai's. We're supposed to have girl time I guess or something. Wanna join? Anko asked, no. I have something else to do. Naruto said, somebody's got a date. Anko said and grinned, so? I had to cancel the first one for a last-minute mission. Naruto said, when will I get to meet this Tamari chick? Anko asked, I don't know. I need to go. I'm already late according to her time. Naruto said and vanished Golden Leaf Hotel, I'm here. Naruto said, yeah. With two seconds to spare. Tamari said, whatever. Why don't you have your fan with you? Naruto asked, I figured I didn't need it. I'm sure you're strong enough to protect the both of us. Tamari said and gave him a smile, I guess you're right. I wouldn't want anything hurting that beautiful face of yours. Naruto said and made her blush as he caressed her cheek, stop it. Tamari said, how about this? Naruto asked and pulled his mask down to give her a kiss, T that's not making it better. Tamari said as she turned bright red, you'll be fine. Naruto said, so, where are we going? Tamari asked, as she stopped blushing, I figured I'd take you to the weapons shop for something I know you'll like, grab some food and then take a walk to my favorite spot. Naruto said, let's go then. Tamari said and looped her arm around Naruto's Higurashi Ninja store, is this the place? Looks kind of small. Tamari said, don't worry. It's bigger on the inside. Naruto said, lead the way. Tamari said and Naruto opened the door for her, after you, Princess Tamari. Naruto said, why thank you. Tamari said as she walked in the store, yo. Old Mad Sato. I'm here. Naruto said, Sato? Tamari asked, he's the owner of the shop. Naruto said, Naruto my boy. How's it going? Sato asked, I'm good. This is Tamari. I brought her here to look around. Naruto said, pleasure to meet you. Tamari said and bowed, likewise. Make sure you keep him out of trouble. Sato said, I only get in trouble when Natsumi is involved. Naruto said, right. Well, I need to get an order ready, so just bring up to the counter and ring the bell when you're ready to check out. Sato said and went to the back, so, what is this awesome thing you think I'll like? Tamari asked, these. Naruto said and showed her some smaller folding fans, we have these in Suna. Tamari said and pulled out one of hers, yes, but pick up one of these and feel the difference between the two. Naruto said and gave her one, wow. It's really light compared to ours. What is this made of? Tamari asked, chakra conducting carbon fiber. It's lighter than metal but stronger and is way better at channeling chakra through them so it'll last longer. Naruto said, as Tamari gave it a try and created a small gust of wind, it's a lot easier to use and the control over my wind is better. I need a bigger one the size of my fan. Tamari said, you can ask old man Sato to custom make you one. Naruto said and pulled out a kunai, is that made of the same material? 
Tamari asked, yup. All of my ninja equipment comes from him. People go to the bigger ninja shop because they can get more for less money, but Sato has way better quality. Naruto said, how much would the custom order cost? I didn't bring much money with me. Tamari said, I'll pay for it. I've been coming here before I became a ninja, so I have a credit here. You can design the fan any way you want and he'll get it done for you. Since it's only one thing, he might be able to get it done in a month. Naruto said, he's that good? The fan I have now was custom made and it took the shop in Suna nearly three months to make. Tamari said, well, he used to be a ninja so he uses a few shadow clones to help him and sometimes his daughter will help, but he only lets her make basic things while he does the custom orders. Naruto said, well, then that gives me one more excuse to come back to Konoha more often. Tamari said, as she looked up into Naruto's eyes, oh? What was the other reason? Naruto asked, a dark-haired, dark-blue-eyed boy that caught my attention in Suna a few months ago. Tamari said, lucky guy. Naruto said, you have no idea how right you are. Tamari said and started to swing her fan around, I see you're having fun. Naruto said, yeah. It's just so light. Does he have any wind ninjutsu? Tamari asked, he should. I know he gets a new shipment of jutsu every other month. Naruto said and took her to the ninjutsu section of the store, I think I'm in love. Tamari said, as she looked at all of the ninjutsu scrolls, I mean it's only our second date, but love has no timetable. Naruto said and she blushed, I I was talking about the scrolls. Tamari said, I know. I'm just messing with you. See anything you like? Naruto asked, a few, yeah. Tamari said and grabbed about ten scrolls, you know these things aren't cheap right? Naruto asked, I thought you had a credit. Tamari said, I do, but how do you know I didn't need it for something special? Naruto. Asked, please. You're the son of the fourth Hokage and from what you told me in our letters through Tatsu, you're technically the head of the Uchiha clan. I don't think you need to worry about money. Tamari said, I mean yeah, but I haven't even touched that money yet. Naruto said, don't think I didn't hear about your mission record. An S-rank mission itself in Konoha is worth at least 1-0-0-0-0-0 yen from what I've heard. You've done four of them and you mean to tell me you're complaining about money? Tamari asked, I guess you're right. I'll just add another 500,000 yen to my credit. Naruto said and her jaw dropped I should really kick your ass right now. Tamari said, now that wouldn't be nice. Naruto said, whatever. Aren't you going to get anything? Tamari asked, nah. I'm up to date with everything I need so far. I'll probably have to stock up again in a few months. Naruto said, as they went up to the counter and saw Sato standing there with a box, I hope you found everything you needed. Sato said, I did. I've never seen these wind ninjutsu scrolls before and I'm from the land of wind. Tamari said, you just have to know the right places to look and people to talk to. Sato said, I see. Naruto said you can make me a fan within a month. Is that true? Tamari asked, it sure is. Just give me a design of the fan with its measurements and I'll get to work on it. Sato said, it's a giant war fan, but I want it made with the same materials as your small fans here. Tamari said, good choice. Any specific designs for it? Like symbols or anything? Sato asked, yeah. On the fan I usually have three moons indicating how strong my wind will be. Can you add those on there? Tamari asked and drew what she wanted it to look like, that's easy. Sato said and wrote her name on top of the paper, Easy. It's a giant war fan. Tamari said, I've made every weapon in this shop along with my daughter. A giant war fan is nothing. Sato said, trust him. He knows what he's doing. Naruto said, yes and Naruto your order will be ready for you in two more months. Sato said, take your time, old man. I'm not in a rush. 
Naruto said, I understand. You'll love them once you see them. Now, I should get started on Tamari's order. Sato said, see you later. Naruto said, thank you. Tamari said and bowed before they left Naruto and Tamari, see. That wasn't so bad. Naruto said, as they were walking around Kanoha to get some food, right. So, what's the deal with our proctor for the second part of the exams? Tamari asked, oh that's Anko. She's playful, funny and sadistic all at the same time. It's actually kind of hard to describe her. Naruto said, the same Anko that basically raised you? Tamari asked, yup. Naruto said, as he paid for her stuff, then how did you not turn out like her? Tamari asked, well, I had Karinai to make sure I didn't. Plus I was seven when they really started to raise me. I've grown numb to her antics over the years and nothing she does really surprises me. Naruto said, I feel bad for her. She'll never get a boyfriend as long as she's like that. Tamari said, actually she has a boyfriend. Naruto said, really? No way. Tamari said, I'm serious. Her boyfriend is the complete opposite of her and believe it or not she's actually calmed down a bit compared to how she was before. Naruto said, how the hell did that happen? Tamari asked, well, from what she told me, she took him home and rode him till sunrise. Naruto said and Tamari blushed, w what? Tamari asked, I'm not repeating myself. It's bad enough that I know that information. Naruto said, why would she tell you that though? Tamari asked, as they stopped walking, after you gave me a kiss the first time we met, I didn't know what it meant. Don't get me wrong, I know about relationships and everything, but that was the first time a girl has ever kissed me and then you ran away. They told me that you were just scared since you didn't kiss me before since we spent every day together. Naruto said, me being scared was an understatement. You're the first boy I liked and I was a nervous wreck. I didn't know what to do after that so I just ran away. Tamari said, well, it's in the past now. We've gotten pretty close since that day. Naruto said, I guess you're right. So, where are we? Tamari asked, this is Ichiraka Ramen. Not the best place to go on a first date, but I figured I'd keep this nice and simple. Naruto said, actually it's okay. I've heard quite a few people talking about this place and wanted to try it. Tamari said, then prepare to be amazed. Naruto said, lead the way. Tamari said and they went into the shop, yo. Old man Tuchi. I'm back. Naruto said, Naruto my boy. Good to see you again. Oh? Who's this? Tuchi asked, this is Tamari. She's my date. Naruto said, you're what? I am yelled from the back, who was that? Tamari asked, I am. She works here as well. Naruto said, I can't believe you. I am said, what did I do? Naruto asked, you brought another girl here. I was supposed to be your first date. I am said, huh? Since when? Naruto asked and Tamari just watched this play out, well, Natsumi. I'm gonna stop you right there. Let me guess, she made a bet with you and your prize was a date with me? Naruto asked, how do you know? I am asked, when Natsumi is involved it's expected. Naruto said, the girl with the red hair that makes her look like a tomato? Tamari asked, yes and please don't call her that. I'm getting tired of stopping her rampaging and then cleaning up her mess. Naruto said, I'm sure it's not that bad. Tamari said, she was suspended from the academy for three months when she was nine for breaking the arms, jaws, and legs of four teachers because they teased her about her hair and called her tomato head. Naruto said and Tamari's jaw dropped, you're kidding, right? Tamari asked, nope. Naruto said, alright. What can I get you two? I am. Asked, I'll take two medium miso pork ramen. Tamari said, good choice. I am said, I'll have my usual. Naruto said, okay. 
We have two medium pork ramen and four large miso beef ramen with extra vegetables and beef. I am said, thanks I am. Naruto said, no problem. I'll be back shortly. I am said, I should be surprised about four large with extra beef and vegetables, but I remembered you ate that barbecue camel with no problem in Suna. Tamari said, I've got a big appetite. Naruto said, clearly. So, how have things been for you? Tamari asked, same old same old. Missions, training, and relaxing. Oh and running away from fangirls trying to remove my mask. Naruto said, fangirls? I haven't seen any. Tamari said, trust me. They're here. They've been silently following us around the entire village. I just hope they keep their mouths shut and then the council finds out. Naruto said, why? Tamari asked, because then Kanoha and Suna will try to force us into an arranged marriage. Naruto said, you say it like it's a bad thing. Tamari said, it is. Don't get me wrong, I do like and everything, but who's to say we even last? I can't predict the future and if that happens, I'd rather not be stuck in a marriage that was forced on me and there's no love involved. Naruto said, I guess that makes sense. Tamari said, how have things been with you? Naruto asked, weird. Tamari said, weird how? Naruto asked, I can't say it out in public. Tamari said, okay. Can we get our orders to go, I am? Naruto asked, sure thing. I'll just have to charge you extra for a late order change. I am said, that's fine. Put it on Natsumi's tab. Naruto said, okay. Here you two go. Have a good day. I am said, we will. Naruto said, where are you taking me? Tamari asked, my place. Naruto said Naruto's apartment, so, what's going on? Naruto asked, I don't know. I can't really explain it. My dad suddenly changed over the past few months. Before he was okay with Gara sleeping in the room and now he refuses to let Gara sleep. I don't know what happened. He's just different. His chakra is even different and he doesn't even bother to show up whenever Gara releases the Shikaku. Tamari said, that is weird. I was wondering why Gara seemed so angry. Hold on. What do you mean his chakra changed? Naruto asked, I mean just that. His chakra became dark and sinister one day he came back from an envoy to meet with a nearby village leader. I know it's weird and he's not really around, but I know what his chakra should feel like and that's not it. Something must have happened to him on his way back and he doesn't realize it. Tamari said, want me to tell the Hokage and see if he can look into it? Naruto asked, no. Suna is already in shambles because of the wind daimyo cutting our budget and sending missions to Kanoha. Keep this between us. This is technically treason in my village. Tamari said as she started to eat her ramen, I won't tell anybody. Naruto said as he removed his mask and she blushed again, I know this isn't my first time seeing you with your mask off, but I can't help it when I blush. Tamari said, it's going to get worse when I actually remove it. Naruto said, oh yeah. When are you going to remove it? Tamari asked, during the Chunin exam finals when all of the important people are here. Daimyos, noble families, rich families. The old man wants to make some big announcement with me and my sister. Naruto said, so, who exactly are you related to? You don't look like any of the people you mentioned. Tamari said, you'll find out in the finals. Naruto said and she yawned, sorry, but it's been a long day. Tamari said, I know. Want me to walk you back to your hotel? Naruto asked, thanks, but I think for both our sakes that I should go alone. I had fun though. Tamari said and gave him a huge smile, me too. Want me to have Tatsu watch over you while you're walking? Naruto asked, she can do that? Tamari asked, yeah. She's not usually a fighter, but apparently she can zap somebody and leave them paralyzed for an hour. Naruto said and summoned Tatsu, Naruto. 
Tamari? Why am I here? I don't have any messages and you're both together. Tatsu said, I have a mission for you, Tatsu. Naruto said, I've always wanted to go on a mission. What is it? Killing a snake? Torturing a snake? Tatsu asked, she's small and violent. I like her. Tamari thought, it's an escort mission. I want you to watch over Tamari as she goes to her hotel. You have my permission to zap anybody that attacks her. Naruto said, sir yes sir. Tatsu said and turned invisible, what the? Where'd she go? Tamari asked, I'm on your head. Your hair smells nice. Anyway, when I'm like this I can't be detected and they won't see me coming if I zap them. Tatsu said, nice. Bye, Naruto. I'll see you tomorrow. Tamari said and gave him a kiss on the cheek, I'll see you tomorrow. Good luck. Naruto said, thank you. Tamari said and left, you can come out now, Kurinai. Naruto said and then the wall next to the door shimmered revealing Kurinai, how do you know I was there? Kurinai asked, really? Somebody who trained me to detect Jinjutsu without my Sharingan asked me how I found her. On top of that, I'm a sensor as well. Naruto said, smart ass. So, how was the date? I only caught the tail end of it. Kurinai said, it was good. Went to old Sato's shop to get her some stuff, got takeout from Ikaraku's and then we came here. Naruto said, not bad for a first date. I just came to check up on you. Good luck tomorrow. Kurinai said and left after Kurinai left, Naruto took a shower and went to bed. Tatsu came back and let him know Tamari made it back to the hotel safe and nobody tried to harm her. His final thoughts were on the rest of the Chunin exams, what was going on with Tamari's dickhead of a father and why Orochimaru himself snuck into the Chunin exams. Little did he or anybody else know, the Kazakage had been murdered. Naruto arrived at the training ground and he immediately sensed Orochimaru was here. He spotted him disguised as a ninja for Kusa and had to quickly finish this part of the exam before he could protect Natsumi even though he had a feeling she wasn't his target. Alright kitties welcome to training ground 44. Enko says, this place looks kinda creepy. Sakura said, shaking. It should be. This place is called the Forest of Death, you'll find out why soon. Enko replied, as they were talking, Natsumi wasn't paying attention so she threw a kanai at her that cut Natsumi's face a bit and then Enko appeared behind her, my beautiful face. What hell is your problem you crazy bitch? Natsumi asked, people like you are the first to die in this forest. Enko said, well, people like you are the first ones to have broken bones if you don't get the fuck off of me. Natsumi said just then Enko felt somebody appear behind her and Natsumi. She pulls out another kanai and holds it up, but a long tongue appears over her shoulder. I was just returning your kanai, said a creepy kusanin after a brief stare off Anko replies, thanks kusanin, but don't stand behind me so close unless you want to die quickly. Anko said, I'm sorry but with the sight of blood and your kanai cutting my hair I couldn't help but get excited. My apologies. The ninja walks away and then Anko returned to the front of the group, excitement must be in the air today for a lot of you, but do not let it get you killed. Or let it. I don't really care. Now these are waivers you must sign that say we are not responsible for your death if you die in the forest. She said and gave them to Natsumi, why the hell did you give me all of them? Natsumi asked, because you're going to pass them out my little tomato. Enko said and Natsumi's eye twitched, I'm going to cut this bitch once the exams are over. Natsumi mumbled and took a waiver before passing them to Sakura, this part of the exam will test your survival skills. This forest has 44 entrance gates and inside there are rivers and in the middle of a forest is a tower 10 kilometers from each gate. This part will test your survival skills in an all-out battle for these scrolls. She said and pulled out a heaven and earth scroll. Scrolls? Sakura asked, you'll be fighting to get a heaven and earth scroll. 
Each team will start with either or and your objective is to collect both scrolls and head to the tower in the middle of the forest. You have 5 days to gather the scrolls if you do not gather the scrolls in 5 days you fail and have to find your own way out of the forest. She said. 5 days. Ino exclaimed, what are we supposed to do about food? Choji asked, find something in the forest, there's plenty of things to eat in there. Enko said, that's not all in there. There's also some man-eating animals and poisonous plants in there. Kabuto said, ah man. Choji said, well you're a smart one. How? Did you know that those were in there? Enko asked, even though she already knew. Well this is my seventh time taking it. He said, wow you must suck. Are you sure you're fit to be a ninja? She asked, purposely pissing him off. No, I'm quite content to be a ninja. I'm feeling lucky this time around so I'll be fine. Kabuto said, gritting his teeth at her insult. If you say so. Now, I need one person from each team to come grab a scroll for your team and head to your designated gates and wait for the signal to go in. You can also be disqualified if you lose a team member or if you open the scrolls before entering the tower. She said, what about me? I'm going solo. Naruto said, since you're going solo, your task will be a bit more difficult. You have to get both scrolls in the forest before heading to the tower. The idiots who prepared the scrolls didn't make any extras. Enko said, get two scrolls. Sounds easy enough. Naruto said after every team had their scroll and were at their gates a timer went off and Enko spoke. All right, the second part of the exams begins now. She exclaims the gates open and all the teams rush into the forest. As Naruto was running through the forest, he felt two teams around him and decided to strike quickly. He didn't want to waste any time so he created a shadow clone and had it tail the team on his left while he went to the right. He thought of a good plan so he kept high in the trees to ambush them. He wanted to conserve strength just in case. Ten minutes later he came upon a team from Kiri and from their chakra levels, they were pretty weak. Two boys and one girl who looked like the leader, I thought you said the person tailing us would be here. Said the shorter boy of the mist team, yeah I want that scroll immediately. The other said, shut up, I know whoever it is was following us but I don't know where they went. The female leader said, behind you. A voice said and the next thing they knew, all of them were knocked out. Naruto began to search them and luck was on his side. He found a heaven scroll on the female ninja and also took the medical supplies they had. His shadow clone came back and brought two earth scrolls. Naruto just looked at the shadow clone with a raised eyebrow. What? Clone Naruto asked why do you have two earth scrolls? Naruto asked, I don't know. I thought it would be nice to have two of them. Clone Naruto said, we only need one. What will we do with the other one? Naruto asked, keep it. Give it to Natsumi. She may need it. Clone Naruto said, good idea. Naruto said and released the clone, so my clone took on another Konoha Genin team. Naruto thought and heard a scream, hmm. That's not Natsumi's scream, but I guess I'll check it out. Naruto said he ran through the forest at a fast pace in the direction of the scream. When he got there, he saw a red-haired girl backed up against a tree with a bear about to tear her to pieces. He was going to kill the bear. But he noticed a scar on the palm of the bear and then he just dropped in front of the girl. Hey, buddy. What are you doing? Naruto asked then the bear relaxed and growled at Naruto, come on. You can't eat her. She's innocent. Naruto said and the bear growled again, who is that? The red-haired girl thought, as she looked for her glasses, look. How about you eat her teammates and let me talk to her? I'll even bring you some fish once the exams are over. Naruto said and the bear seemingly nodded before leaving, found them. The girl said and put her glasses on, sup. Naruto said, you a. Uh, h hi. The girl said filled with fear, don't be scared. 
If I wanted you dead then I would have let Bosco kill you. Naruto said, Bosco? The girl asked, oh right. He was the bear that was about to eat you. So, who are you? Naruto asked, Karen Yuzuma, Karen. Karen said, as she didn't want to reveal her last name, I'm Naruto Uchiha. It's nice to meet you, Karen Uzumaki. Naruto said and gave her a smile, but she started to hyperventilate, oh no. He understood my last name. Karen thought, whoa. Whoa. Easy. I'm not going to hurt you. I understand why you want to keep your last name a secret. Plus, we have another Uzumaki in Konoha. You aren't the last one. Naruto said, another Uzumaki? Karen asked, yup. She's my sister. Naruto said, I thought you were an Uchiha. Karen said, I am. We have the same father, but different mothers. It's a long story. I'm sure she'd want to meet you. Naruto said, she can't. Karen said, why not? Naruto asked, because since my team is dead, I have to leave the forest. My Jonin sensei will take me back to Kusa immediately and I'll have to face punishment for failing the Chunin exams. Karen said, Kusa? Why didn't your parents come to Konoha? That's technically where all Uzumaki are supposed to be. Naruto said, really? Karen asked and she was filled with hope, yeah. I mean from what I've learned before its destruction, the Uzumaki clan merged with the Senju clan through marriage, which makes you a Konoha citizen. Naruto said, that must be what my mom meant before she died when she told me to follow the leaves and I'll find the flame. Or something like that. Karen said, more like where tree leaves dance, one shall find flames. Naruto said, that's it. How do you know that saying? It's supposed to be a secret. Karen said, it's an old saying passed down in Konoha from the first Hokage to the third Hokage. The actual quote is, where tree leaves dance, one shall find flames, the fire's shadow will illuminate the village and once again tree leaves shall bud anew. I'm guessing she only told you the first part because the leaf village is in the land of fire. Naruto said, I guess, but I can't exactly leave my village and be safe. Karen said, as she grew depressed, why not? Naruto asked, because my village sold me away. Karen said, they did what? Naruto asked, yeah. They sold me away to. Orochimaru. I know why he wants me and I can't get away from him. Karen said, why does he want you? Naruto asked, because he's sick and wants to experiment with my healing ability. It's called Heal Bite and it's self-explanatory. Somebody bites me and my chakra will heal them. It's how my mother died. Kusa forced us into their village because my mom revealed that she could use the Heal Bite ability as well when she healed a stranger in the woods. She was overworked and died from healing too many people. After she died, that responsibility was passed on to me until they sold me to Orochimaru. He placed a tracker seal somewhere on me and he's used it to find me multiple times when I tried to run away. Karen said, I was going to ask why you had so many bite marks on your arms, but I see why. I can remove the tracker seal for you, but getting you out of here will be difficult since you have large chakra reserves and it'll be easy to detect you. Naruto said, I can suppress my chakra levels to zero and become undetectable or use my sensing ability to block out all sensors. Karen said and Naruto nodded, in that case, let's get rid of that tracker seal. Where is it? Naruto asked, on the back of my neck. Karen said and moved her hair, piece of cake. Naruto said as he went through hand signs and placed his hand on her neck, I've never heard of an Uchiha being this skilled in Fuenjutsu. This tracker seal is at least a level 5 sealing skill. Karen said and flinched as she felt the seal being removed, I get my Fuenjutsu skills from my dad. He was a master himself. Naruto said, that makes you unique then. Karen said, I don't want to brag, but I'm skilled in every aspect of being a ninja. Naruto said and removed his hand, sounds like a lie to me. Karen said, I'm telling the truth. 
I may be an elite genin in rank, but skill-wise I'm lojonin level. Naruto said, then why are you taking the chunin exams? Karen asked me and my sister wanted to take them together and become a chunin together. I actually turned down a field promotion three times. Naruto said, that's some dedication to your sister. Karen said, she's the only blood relative I have left. Naruto said, I guess that's nice. So, how am I getting out of here? Karen asked, I'll take you to the tower. Naruto said, I can't get in. I only have a heaven scroll. Karen said, I've got two earth scrolls and a heaven scroll. You can have one of the earth scrolls. Naruto said, then what? Karen asked, I'll take you to the old man. Naruto said, the old man? Karen asked, the Hokage. Naruto said, you call the Hokage old man? Karen asked, yeah. He doesn't mind. Naruto said and placed a hand on her shoulder, that better be the only place your hand touches me. Karen said, don't worry. I'm kind of involved with somebody and I'd rather not get hit with her fan. Naruto said and they vanished in a Shunshin forest of Death Tower, alright. We made it. Record time too. Naruto said, how long has it been? Karen asked, I don't know. Maybe an hour. Naruto said, as they walked into the tower and looked around, now what? Karen asked and Naruto read off a plaque, if qualities of heaven are your desire, acquire wisdom to take your mind higher. If earthly qualities are what you lack, train your body and prepare to attack. When heaven and earth are open together, the perilous path will become righteous forever. This something is the secret that guides us from this place today. Naruto said, what does that even mean? Karen asked, simply put, we need to open the scrolls. Naruto said, as they threw their scrolls after opening them revealing Kakashi and Karen's Jonin sensei, well, this isn't much of a surprise. Kakashi said, Karen? Where are your teammates? Her Jonin sensei asked, they're dead. A bear killed them and I was about to be next until he helped me. Karen said, Naruto, I thought the purpose was to defeat your enemies and not help them. Kakashi said, in my defense, I had to deal with Bosco after her teammates killed his mother. Naruto said, Bosco? Kakashi asked, long story. Naruto said, Karen, accepting help from the enemy is unacceptable. You have once again shamed the village. Pack your things. We're leaving. Her Jonin sensei said, no. Karen said, what did you just say? He Jonin sensei asked, I said no. You and Kusa can kiss my ass. I'm done with that village. I found my real home. Karen said and threw her headband at his feet, you're not going anywhere. You have your responsibilities to Kusa and until further notice, you will get back to the hotel and pack your shit so we can leave. Her sensei said and when he took a step forward, Naruto had his sword at his neck, you heard what she said. Now back off. Naruto said, you want to start a war with our village? Her jonin sensei asked, it's a war you'd lose. However, you have two choices. One, you can take Karen back to Kusa and start a war over stealing a shinobi of Kanoha and holding her captive. You know exactly what I'm talking about too. Your second choice is to leave now and keep your village standing. Technically we have the right to go to war with your village since you're responsible for the death of her mother. Naruto said, don't leave this village if you know what's good for you. Her jonin sensei said and left, care to explain? Kakashi asked, she's an Uzumaki. Naruto said, you should go to the Hokage. Kakashi said, I know. Naruto said and vanished with Karen Hokage office, yo. Old man. Naruto said, as he came in the office with Karen, Naruto? Aren't you supposed to be taking the Chunin exams? Hiruzen asked, I finished the second part already. I'm here for business. Naruto said and pushed Karen in front of him, who's this? Hiruzen asked, I, I am Karen Uzumaki. Karen said Uzumaki? 
I thought there was only one left. Hiruzen said, she was forced into Kusa. Naruto said, my mom died from overusing her heal bite ability. I was responsible for healing everyone in the village after she died. Before she died she told me where tree leaves dance, one shall find flames. I guess I finally found the flames. Karen said, yes. During the times of Mito Uzumaki and Hashirama Senju, that was the saying we said for any Uzumaki to use just in case they ever got lost and needed to find sanction in the leaf village. We used that saying because there was a group of people dyeing their hair red during the Third Shinobi War to get into Kanoha. Hiruzen said, can I stay? Karen asked, yes, but you'll have to go on a three-month probation, as well as a mind walk by Inoichi since you were in a different village. It's only to see if you are here as a spy. Hiruzen said, well, I am. Well, I was. Karen said, can you elaborate? Hiruzen asked, my village sold me to Orochimaru so he could experiment on me later because of my Uzumaki abilities. He said he had some business to take care of in Kanoha and I was used to make sure nobody could detect us. He placed a tracker seal on me and used it to find me once when I tried to run away. Karen said business here? He has no business with anybody in the village. Do you have an idea about what it is that he wants? Hiruzen asked, not really. All I know is that he wants the Sharingan. He had a guy looking through your files, Naruto. Karen said, I know. It was Kabuto Yakushi. Naruto said, I don't think he's after you though. He wants the Sharingan and you're already 13, so the chances of you having the Sharingan is extremely low. Karen said, I never said I didn't have the Sharingan. I just don't go around flashing it like a dumbass. Naruto said, Naruto, head back into the forest and protect Sasuke. However, do not let him see your Sharingan. Hiruzen said, you got it, old man. Naruto said and vanished, um. What about me? Karen said, Cat. Hiruzen said, yes, Lord Hokage. Cat said, as she appeared, take Karen here to Ibiki and Inoichi. Tell them she's the newest member of our village and to give her the usual checkup. After that, I want her kept there under heavy umbu surveillance for protection. Hiruzen said, yes sir. Kat said, what about food and stuff? Karen asked, they will provide you with everything you need. Since you're not a prisoner, you'll get the good stuff. Hiruzen said, sweet. Karen said and left with Kat, I fear I may be joining the three of you soon. You as well, Buwako. Hiruzen said Team 7, well, that was something. Natsumi said, as they just finished fighting a rain ninja, it just proves we can't trust appearances. We need a secret code or something to identify ourselves. Sasuke said, alright. So, what do you have in mind? Sakura asked, listen closely because I only want to say this once. The question will be, when does a ninja strike? The response is, a ninja waits until the time is right. When the enemy sleeps, it drops its guard. When its weapons lie. Forgotten in the stillness of the night. That is the moment for a ninja to strike. Sasuke said, that's too fucking long in the middle of a fight. Let's keep it simple. How about the question, who is the ice ninja? The answer is simple and we all know who it is. Natsumi said, I think that's a good idea. Sakura said, no. How all we know if the person has a henge on? Sasuke asked, use your fucking Sharingan dipshit. The henge is basically a genjutsu and your Sharingan should be able to see through genjutsu, right? Natsumi asked, she's got a point. Sakura said, fine. Now that we have that over with, you two will follow my lead with no questions asked. Sasuke said, excuse me? Who the fuck put you in charge, duck butt? If anything, I'm the one who should be in charge. You're too emotional and clearly stated you don't care about your teammates. Sakura has the brains, but she's useless in a fight. No offense. 
Natsumi said, a lot taken. Sakura said, me on the other hand, I'm a combination of brains and the skills to back it up. Plus, I can turn myself into an army to get us out of a tough situation with my shadow clone jutsu. Natsumi said and then something nearly cut her cheek, what the? Sakura asked, what was that? Natsumi asked and then a huge gust of wind nearly knocked them away revealing the same Kusa ninja from earlier, all right. You two go out into the woods and keep your eyes open. I'll handle this alone. The Kusa ninja said to her teammates and they left, you bitch. You cut my damn cheek. Natsumi said, as they all got ready to fight, I'm impressed. That gust of wind should have knocked you away. This will be more fun than I thought. The Kusa ninja said and licked her lips with her long tongue, this person is too creepy. Sakura thought, she's the same ninja from earlier that had the stare down with the crazy lady from earlier. Natsumi thought, you want our earth scroll, don't you? It would go so nice with your heaven scroll. The Kusa ninja said and swallowed the scroll with no problems, what the hell? Natsumi thought, well, let's begin. When this is over, one of us will have both scrolls and the other will be dead. The Kusa ninja said, bring it, bitch. Natsumi said Naruto as he was running through the forest, Naruto fought multiple teams and gathered their scrolls. He was losing time for this mission and had to admit that most of these teams had great teamwork, but they were still no match for him. Along the way he passed by Tamari and her brothers, but he decided to keep it moving since he had something important to do. He arrived at the scene and saw Sasuke on the ground clutching his neck, Sakura was on the verge of passing out and Natsumi was being held up by a tongue from the same Kusa ninja from earlier. He saw a purple glow on the fingertips of the Kusa nin and recognized it at the five-pronged seal jutsu. He figured this was Orochimaru in his disguise, so he activates his manjiku after slapping. An explosive tag on a tree and switched places with Orochimaru. Naruto? Natsumi asked, as the Nine Tails chakra stopped flowing in her, yeah. You were no match for that person. Naruto said and then his explosive tag went off, who is she? Natsumi asked, that's not a girl. That's Orochimaru. He's one of the legendary San Nin. Naruto said and then they heard an evil laugh, so, the other Uchiha decides to show his face. You don't possess what I want, but I'll test you to see if you're worthy of my power as well. You want Itachi dead as well, don't you? Orochimaru asked, I don't need your power and for the record, I don't give two fucks about what Itachi did to the Uchiha clan. Naruto said, interesting. You don't have the Sharingan, but I can tell that you are stronger than Sasuke. Let me give you a little test. Orochimaru said, Natsumi, Sakura. Take Sasuke somewhere safe and leave. I'll catch up with you. Naruto said, no way. He's too powerful for you. Natsumi said, I can handle this. Just go. Sasuke's safety is our main priority. I'll keep him distracted. Naruto said, don't die. Natsumi said and grabbed Sasuke before leaving with Sakura, quite bold of you to challenge me by yourself. A lone genin hopes to defeat one of the legendary San Nin. Orochimaru said, I don't need to defeat you. I just need to buy some time. Now, let's dance. Naruto said Naruto released his resistance seals and released a lot of chakra which shocked Orochimaru, that a genin who wasn't a Jinchuriki had this much chakra. Naruto, taking his moment of shock, knees Orochimaru in the gut and gives him a kick that knocks Orochimaru back into a tree. Kukukuku. I'm impressed, Naruto. A mere genin was able to catch me off guard. Although Sasuke has the Sharingan I will say that you're quite unique and would make a great host for me before Sasuke. I fought him at low chunin speed so I'll try that much against you. Orochimaru said he took off at low chunin speed however before he could get halfway he felt a fist in his stomach and looked down to see Naruto with a smirk. Naruto pulled out a kunai and tried to cut Orochimaru with it, but he grabbed Naruto's wrist and threw him away. 
Don't underestimate me just because I'm not using the Sharingan. I can still keep up. Naruto said with that they both blurred away at Midchunin level and Orochimaru was shocked that Naruto was still keeping up with him every punch that connected against Naruto he got hit as well and it was vice versa so he kicked it up to low Jonin and Naruto was still keeping up with him. He knew he couldn't increase his chakra levels no further than what they were at unless the umbu would be on him and he didn't want to deal with them. Orochimaru used his true speed which was Kage level and hit Naruto with a straight jab stunning him, grabbed him by the neck and slammed him onto the ground. Very impressive. I won't kill you because that would cause alarms. I will simply knock you out and leave you for the animals to kill. Any last words? Orochimaru asked, yeah. Boom. Naruto said he lifted up his shirt revealing a ton of explosive tags and set them off causing everything within four miles to get destroyed. Team 7, do you think it was smart for us to leave Naruto back there? Sakura asked, as she and Natsumi were in a hiding spot with Sasuke underneath a tree, we had no choice. Something big is going on and it obviously revolves around Sasuke. Naruto must know what's going on and needs us to get Sasuke away from that guy. Natsumi said, who was that? Sakura asked, as she was patching up Sasuke's wounds, Naruto said that was Orochimaru. Natsumi said, one of the legendary Sanin? Sakura asked, yeah and he's a pedophile. Natsumi said and Sakura just looked at her, what makes you say that? Sakura asked, come on, Pinky. Use that big ass head of yours. He's like 50 years old and he bit a 13 year old boy on the neck. That just screams pedophile. He even lifted up my shirt a bit. He tried to steal my innocence. Natsumi said and Sakura couldn't help the chuckle that escaped her, I guess you're right. I should have known something was wrong when Sasuke couldn't even lay a finger on that guy. Sakura said and then a huge explosion was heard, what the hell was that? Natsumi asked, as she and Sakura fell to the ground, it sounded like an explosion. Sakura said, that must have been some jutsu for us to feel the shockwave all the way over her. Natsumi said and Sakura looked at her ankle, you twisted your ankle. Sakura said, I know. It happened when we were fighting Orochimaru. Natsumi said, you twisted your ankle and carried Sasuke all the way over here? Sakura asked, yeah. It's no big deal. Natsumi said, Natsumi, we traveled like five miles. Let me take a look at it. Sakura said, I'll be fine, Sakura. Natsumi said, just let me take a look at it. Naruto gave me this medical ninjutsu book and I might be able to help. Sakura said and Natsumi sighed, fine. No funny business. Natsumi said and removed her ninja sandal, well, from what I can tell it's not broken, but it's swollen. I can wrap it up for you, but you should take it easy the next couple of days. Sakura said and wrapped her ankle, that just means we have to head straight for the tower when Sasuke wakes up. Natsumi said, we can't. We still have to find an earth scroll. Sakura said, no, we don't. Natsumi said and pulled out an earth scroll, where did you get that? Sakura asked, I didn't realize I had it until a few minutes ago. Naruto must have given it to me before we left without me noticing. Natsumi said, let's rest up for a few hours and then head to the tower then. Sasuke's still out and your ankle is still swollen. Sakura said, fine. You'll have to be on the lookout then. Even though it's not much. Natsumi said and smirked, better than what you can do right about now. Sakura said, bite me. Natsumi said, no thanks. Sakura said, and. They shared a laugh, this is the longest we've gone without arguing. It feels weird. Natsumi said, it does feel a bit weird. Sakura said, tell me about it. Natsumi said, do you think we could ever be friends like Naruto said after our wave mission? Sakura asked, we were friends before, but your mother ruined our friendship. Natsumi said, she did? Sakura asked, yeah. I'm surprised you don't remember. 
Me, you, and Eno were playing at the park when your mom showed up and told you to stay away from me because I was a monster. Ever since that day, you never spoke to me again unless it was to insult me just so you could fit in. Natsumi said, why would she call you a monster and make me stay away from you? Sakura asked, I can't tell you. Not yet at least. Natsumi said, why not? Sakura asked, because we have people coming toward us. Three of them to be exact and they're not friendly. Natsumi said, I'll set up a few traps. Stay right here. Sakura said and quietly snuck out bushes, I found you. As Orochimaru ordered, we'll wait for daybreak to do it. Remember, our target is none other than Sasuke Uchiha. A boy wrapped in bandages said, yeah, but if the other two get involved, it's okay to kill them, right? Another boy asked, of course. The man said Team 7, I set the traps with the little supplies I had left. It's not much, but it should at least help us. Sakura said, it's something at least. We should probably rest up. Natsumi said, we can't. The enemy might attack any minute. Sakura said, it's the middle of the night. They can't attack us because they can't see us. This gives us a few hours before the sun rises. Thanks to Kakashi-sensei, I've got used to waking up an hour or two before the sun rises. I'll wake you up when it's about twenty minutes before sunrise. Natsumi said, what about Sasuke? Sakura asked and they looked at him, I don't think he's waking up any time soon. Whatever Orochimaru did to him really messed him up. It's like he's in a coma. Natsumi said, I really wish Naruto was here right now. Do you think he's alright? Sakura asked, one thing about my brother is that he can get out of any problem in an instant. I don't know how he does it, but it's really cool. Natsumi said, I've been meaning to ask you about that. Why do you call him your brother? Sakura asked, because he's my brother. We have the same dad, but different moms. At first I didn't know we were related, but I was always telling him he was like my brother. Turns out he knew all along that we were related, but couldn't tell me due to certain circumstances surrounding our father and my mother. Natsumi said, is that why he was always so protective of you? Sakura asked, yeah. He's been protecting me since I was five. He's only taking the Chunin exams because we want to become Chunin together. Natsumi said, he's a good person. I've never seen him get angry except the day we became a team. Sakura said, yeah. It's like we're polar. Opposites. I'm the hothead and he's the calm one. Natsumi said, that's the truth. We should get some sleep. Sakura said, yeah. Good night. Natsumi said, good night. Sakura said next day, Sakura, wake up. Natsumi said, mmm. What is it? Sakura asked, it's time to wake up. Natsumi said, huh? Oh yeah. Man, I slept great. Kind of a bummer that I can't sleep some more. Sakura said, the sooner our guests are dealt with, the sooner we can make it to the tower. It's only been a day, so if everything goes well, we should be able to make it to the tower before nightfall. Natsumi said, what about your ankle? Sakura asked, I'll be fine. It's a bit stiff, but once I get moving, it'll feel better. Natsumi said, some hiding spot you have. At least you don't have to wait for us to show up anymore. Wake Sasuke up. We want to fight him. A boy wrapped in bandages said, what do you want with him? What is it that you're after? I know Orochimaru is calling the shots from the shadows. Sakura said and that threw the three sound genin for a loop, huh? All three of them said, what's that strange bruise on the back of Sasuke's neck? You're behind this, aren't you? Now you want to fight him when he can't defend himself. Sakura said, I can't stay quiet after that. First I'm gonna kill the girl and then I'll kill Sasuke. The other boy said, wait, Zaku. The bandage boy said, huh? What is it? Zaku asked, it's the color of dirt that's just been dug up. 
this grass doesn't grow in a place like this. You know, if you're going to lay a trap, the least you could do is make it so it can't be discovered. Bandage Boy said, you're just a joke. You threw your kunai so that the squirrel wouldn't be caught in the trap. Zaku said, now we can kill her. The trio jumped at her, but Sakura cut some ninja wired and a giant log came at them, a log? Zaku said and Bandage Boy destroyed the log, nice try, little girl. You clearly have no talent as a ninja. Someone like you needs to make more of an effort. Don't you think so? Bandage Boy asked as they were closing in on Sakura Leaf Hurricane all of a sudden, the trio of Sound Genin were kicked away by Rock Lee, looks like you also need to make more of an effort. Lee said, who are you? Bandage Boy asked, I am the beautiful blue beast of the Leaf Village, Rock Lee. Lee said, why are you here, Lee? Sakura asked, I will always appear anytime and anywhere you are in trouble, my dear Sakura. Lee said, hey. A voice said and everyone looked up to see Naruto, Naruto. Sakura exclaimed, another Leaf Village scum. Dosu, let me kill this one as well. Zaku said, they're dropping in like flies. I can careless about what you do with him. Dosu said, I'll give you three seconds before me and my sister embarrass you. Naruto said, you're all by yourself. The female sound ninja said, look behind you. Naruto said and she turned around to Natsumi standing there with a smile on her face, hello. Natsumi. Said and knocked her out with a single punch, how did she move so quickly on a twisted ankle? It was swollen a few minutes ago. Sakura thought, why are you here? Naruto asked, we want to fight the Uchiha. Dosu said, Sasuke is clearly unable to fight right now. However, I can take his place if you'd like. Naruto said as he dropped in front of them, you're a waste of our time. We said we wanted the Uchiha and not some random kid with a mask. Zaku said, I can assure you that I'm not some random kid with a mask. Naruto said and activated his Sharingan, another Uchiha. What the hell is going on? Dosu asked, you leaf ninja just keep appearing out of nowhere. Oh well. More people for me to play with. Zaku said and pointed his hands at Naruto, Zaku wait. Dosu said, but it was too late he had already pointed his hands at Naruto decapitating airwaves he blew a strong gust of wind at Naruto who didn't move and got hit by the blast. Naruto. Yelled Sakura, Rock Lee, and Natsumi however a gust of wind blew the smoke away revealing Naruto who was standing there with his arms crossed. Is that all you can do? Naruto asked and Zaku got pissed, no this is. Zaku said he was about to do another jutsu but his arm had a kunai lodged in where the air came out and he got a kick to the side of the head. He was knocked out by Naruto which put Dosu on edge at how easily he did it. Nobody saw him move except for Niji who was hiding up in a tree with Tenten and he barely saw him due to his Byakugan being activated. He's fast. Niji thought, he's almost as fast as me without my weights on. Lee thought the other sound ninja both were shocked by how easy it was for Naruto to defeat Zaku. He wanted to attack, but before he could move, Naruto and Natsumi were standing in front of him with a kunai pointed right at his face. Dosu looked around and saw nothing that could help him since both of his teammates were knocked out. Any last words? Natsumi asked, wait. I give up. Dosu said, smart choice of words, mummy man. Natsumi said, H here. Take our scroll. Dosu said, we don't need your scroll. Fuck off before I change my mind. Natsumi said and Dosu grabbed both of his teammates before quickly leaving, you can come down now. Naruto said and Niji dropped down with Tenten, Naruto, are you okay? You look a mess. Sakura said, I'll be fine. How are you two doing? Naruto asked, I'm fine, but Natsumi twisted her ankle. Sakura said, I'm fine. Natsumi said, trust her. She's fine. She has a unique healing ability. Naruto said, really? It must be some kind of Kekiai Genkai then. 
Sakura said, yeah. You can say that. Naruto said, excuse me, Naruto. Lee said, yeah. Naruto said, please have a spar with me. Lee said, no. Naruto said, why not? Lee asked, because if you're anything like Might Guy, then I know exactly how you fight and why any other genin other than myself would lose to you. Naruto said, Niji can beat him. He's done. It plenty of times. Tenten said, I can assure you that Niji has not beaten Lee when he's going all out. Naruto said, how do you know? Tenten asked, because Lee is a genius of hard work and it's hard to find somebody who trains harder than him. Naruto said and then a sinister chakra was felt in the area, w what is that? Sakura asked, I've never felt something so evil before. Natsumi said, looks like our teammate finally decided to wake up. Naruto said, yeah, but that chakra. It's evil. Sakura said, as Sasuke came from the hiding spot covered in black marks, this power he gave me. I can feel it growing stronger every second that passes. Sasuke said, as he looked around and saw everybody moving back from the sinister chakra except Naruto who just stood there. He looks creepy. Natsumi said, Naruto, I want to test this new power out against you. Sasuke said with a cruel smile and activated his Sharingan with one Tomo in his right eye and two in his left eye. The others are about to step in, but Naruto holds his hand out at them. Stay out of this. It'll be over soon. Naruto said he motions for Sasuke to come at him which he obliged. Due to his curse mark, Sasuke's speed increased to mid chunin and every punch or kick he threw at Naruto was dodged easily. Naruto gave him a strong jab to the face which made Sasuke stumble backwards holding onto his face. Before Sasuke could react, Naruto put him in a chokehold until he passed and the black markings on his face receded. What was that? Natsumi asked, we'll talk about it later. Let's go. Naruto said, wait. You don't think we're going to let you go freely, do you? We want your heaven scroll. Niji said, do you honestly think you can beat us? Well, we know you can beat Pinky, but do you honestly think you can beat me and Naruto? Natsumi asked, I am fated to win against the two of you. Niji said, then do it. Naruto said from behind him and his eyes went wide, my Byakugan couldn't even keep track of him. Niji thought, I'm waiting. Naruto said and put a kunai to his neck, Niji, stop. Let's just get a scroll off of somebody else. Tenten said, fine. You're lucky. Niji said and Naruto lowered his kunai, if you say so. Sakura, Natsumi, let's go. Naruto said and grabbed Sasuke as they jumped into the tree's forest tower, we made it. Sakura said, as she was breathing heavily, you really should start training more. Naruto said, shut up. Just because the two of you are freaks of nature doesn't mean you can rub it in. Sakura said, I wasn't, but okay. Naruto said, what do we do now? Natsumi asked, open the scrolls. Naruto said, I don't think that's a smart idea. Sakura said, yeah. We ran into a group that opened their scroll and they were knocked out. Natsumi said, you couldn't open them in the forest. It's okay to open them here. I've already done it. Naruto said, really? How long did it take for you to complete the second part? Sakura asked, I don't. No. Maybe an hour. If that. I found two teams quickly and took them out. It helps that I've been in this forest plenty of time growing up. Naruto said, are you sure we're supposed to open the scrolls? Sakura asked, done. Natsumi said and opened the scrolls then threw them, Natsumi. Sakura said, hey. It's been a long time. Irika said, trying to make a cool entrance, if that was your idea of a cool entrance, then you need more work. You suck. Natsumi said and Irika deflated, Irika sensei Sakura asked, it appears you guys have gone through a lot. Irika said, will you hurry up and stop wasting time? 
we have something to do. Naruto said, right. At the end of the second test, we Chunin are supposed to welcome the test takers. I just happened to get the important task of being the messenger for you guys. It's only been one day and you've already made it. Congratulations on surviving the second exam. Irika said, if we had looked at the scrolls in the middle of the exam, what were you going to do, Irika sensei Sakura asked, well, the point of the second exam was to test you mission execution ability. I'm the case of the scrolls being opened contrary to the rules, would have had to knock you out. Some ninja found that out the hard way. Irika said, then I guess it's a good thing we didn't open those scrolls. I wouldn't want to embarrass you, Irika sensei it would be a shame if a genin knocked out somebody who has been a chunin for many years. Natsumi said, Irika sensei, what does that mean on the wall? Sakura asked and pointed to the plaque, their chunin instructions Lord Hokage recorded for us to follow. Heaven stands for your mind and earth for your body. If qualities of heaven are your desire acquire wisdom to take your mind higher. Get it? Irika asked, this is taking too long. You wonder why I barely showed up to class. Your voice puts me to sleep. We need to go. Like right now. Naruto said and picked Sasuke up off the ground, what happened to him? Irika asked, Naruto choked his ass out. Natsumi said as Irika looked at Sakura, what she said. Sakura told him, just one more thing before you go. Irika said, nope. Naruto said and vanished Hokage office, do you mind explaining why your teammate is unconscious in my office? Hiruzen asked, as he was looking at Naruto and an unconscious Sasuke, I choked his ass out. Naruto said, I see. What happened? Hiruzen asked, Orochimaru got to him before I could get there. Naruto said and showed him the curse mark, we need to take him out of the exams. Enko said, we can't. With Orochimaru here, he'd know we were onto him. Sasuke must remain in the Chunin exams. I'll have Kakashi seal it away after his match. Hiruzen said, there's a huge problem we face. Naruto said, what is it? Hiruzen asked, Sasuke already used the power of the curse mark. He's going to use it again even if you seal it away. I know what type of seal Kakashi is going to use and Sasuke. We'll do anything to get power. Naruto said, I'm sure Sasuke will be able to overcome this. Hiruzen said, I don't mean to be rude, but you're being too naive right now, Lord Hokage. Naruto said and that threw everyone for a loop since he only calls him old man, yup. He's pissed. Enko thought, I assure you I am not being naive. Hiruzen said, that's bullshit and you know it. Sasuke was already a flight risk the moment he woke up from his coma after the Uchiha massacre. This village coddled him and gave him whatever he wanted. He's obsessed with killing Itachi and will do anything to do it even if he has to betray the village. A simple seal won't do the job. This curse mark puts you in a lose-lose situation. Naruto said, how so? Hiruzen asked, the only way to keep Sasuke from leaving is to fill him up with every single jutsu, boosting his ego and basically encouraging his desire to kill Itachi for revenge. You don't do that and he leaves the village to join Orochimaru which will most likely result in somebody having to kill him. In other words, we're fucked. Naruto said, you should have more faith in Sasuke to do the right thing. Hiruzen said, I have as much faith in Sasuke doing the right thing, as you do with Danzo doing the right thing. Naruto said and everyone could feel the tension in the room, that was a bit too far. Enko said, it's the truth. He knows I'm right deep down, but refuses to admit it. Naruto said, that's enough. Sasuke will remain in the exams and Kakashi will proceed with the sealing process in a few days after his match. You're dismissed. Hiruzen said, fine. You're the Hokage. Naruto said and vanished, Enko. Tell Kakashi to meet me here. I want you to make sure everything is prepared for the next part of the exams. Hiruzen said, yes sir. 
Enko said and vanished Naruto after his talk with Hiruzen, Naruto went to the training room in the tower to blow off some steam. He didn't talk to anybody along the way and it made everyone worried. Natsumi, Sakura and Tamari all tried to talk to him, but they were ignored as he wasn't in the mood right now. He sealed the room off from everyone to work on his ninjutsu, taijutsu, medical ninjutsu, shuriken jutsu and his fuinjutsu. He was brought to a stop by the arrival of Tatsu. What's up, Tatsu? Naruto asked, I come with good news. Tatsu said, what is it? Naruto asked, the elders of the clan will allow you to begin training with us. They said you are far stronger than your mom was when she was your age and you can train with us now. You won't learn everything, but you'll learn a technique or two. Tatsu said, seriously? I'm going to be trained by the strongest dragon? Naruto asked, who do you think the strongest dragon is? Tatsu asked, Lady Catalina. Naruto said and Tatsu shook her head, she may be the boss summons, but she's not the strongest dragon. Tatsu said, then who is? Naruto asked, an elder named Are. He sealed himself away many many. Years ago as he once said that the one who has the knowledge of his ritual will be able to summon him. Tatsu said, who has the knowledge to summon him? Naruto asked, nobody. Our elders along with Lady Catalina have searched everywhere and they were unable to locate anything. He's who they call on for a major battle that Lady Catalina knows she can't win. We were lucky that he hasn't been needed ever since he sealed himself away, but our elders fear that we will need him in the near future. Tatsu said, how do they expect us to call on him when we can't even unseal him? Naruto asked, I don't know. I'm just the messenger. Anyway, they want to start training you in maybe a week or so for about a month and then they'll see how you do before moving on. Tatsu said, well, I'm in the middle of the Chunin exams. I'll have to come when I'm finished. Naruto said, I'll let them know. Tatsu said and left, I've got four days left until the second part is over. I'll just rest up for those days. Naruto said and when he left the room, Natsumi and Sakura were waiting for him, so, this is where you've been. Sakura said, yeah. Naruto said, you sealed the room, didn't you? Natsumi asked, yeah. Can't have people spying on me. Naruto said, I'm your teammate and sister. I think I should be able to train with you. Natsumi said, you're also a potential opponent in these Chunin exams. Naruto said and she pouted, Naruto, have you seen Sasuke since you left with him? Sakura asked, he's in his room right now. He's probably wondering how he got there. Naruto said, I'll go and check on him. Sakura said, no. You need to stay away from him right now. Naruto said, why? He's our teammate. Sakura said, Sakura. I'm more of a teammate than Sasuke and I'm barely with you guys. Right now he's really dangerous. Naruto said, is it because of that mark on his neck? Is it making him evil? Sakura asked, I'll be blunt. Sasuke has always been evil and nobody other than a few have noticed it. The curse mark doesn't make somebody evil, it just gives them a huge power boost. If Sasuke were to attack you, He's fully aware of what he's doing and out of love for his mom who was basically my aunt, I'd rather not have to kill him. That's why I'm saying stay away from him. Since he's gotten a taste of that power in the forest of death, there's no doubt that he'll want to have it again. Naruto said, what about the Chunin exams? If he's a risk right now, shouldn't he be removed? Natsumi asked, you'll have to ask the Hokage about that. However, it's pointless because I've already tried to talk to him as did Anko. Naruto said, well, if I have to fight him I'll just knock some sense into him. Natsumi said, if he uses that mark, you'll have to be able to counter it. Right now, he completely outclasses you with that mark. Naruto said, then I'll just have to get stronger. Natsumi said, you do that. Naruto said and walked away, we were about to go get. Something to eat in the food area. How about you join us? 
Sakura asked Naruto's side and decided to join them since he knew they wouldn't leave him alone. As they were walking away, Naruto silently threw a kunai towards the wall where he felt somebody was watching them. As they walked away, there was a chuckle from the shadows revealing Iwaji disguised as a sand Kanoha genin. Son of Minato Namikaze. I can't wait for us to meet and watch you die at my feet. Iwaji said and then sunk into the wall. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Guys, make sure to help the author by visiting the link in the description. This is Fox Sage, and I'm signing off.